So welcome to another Bootstrap 3 Extras tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at input groups. So what an input group basically is, is this what you see in front of you really. It's just attaching something to a text box. So the text box is the focus. And this example, we've got a dollar sign attached to the front of it. So we can enter in like a price here. So that's a $78. And it's got a dollar sign sort of attached in front of it. So this is sort of for uh, the appearance of it. It looks much nicer. Here we've got a similar situation, a dollar sign in front of it. By the end, we've got the text per item. And here, again, this is a text box. You could put numbers in there. And for the last one, we've got a button. Uh, so in here, we could put text in here. And it's got a search button. So this is, behaves like a normal button. Uh, so yeah, it's attached. You can also put like BTN danger. So you can put like all the different colors of it, basically. So if we go into our code, again, I've got a container here just to make it easier. Uh, what we first need to do is create a div with a class equal to input dash group then inside here what we're going to do is we're going to have the text on the left first so first we're going to do the dollar sign example so here we're going to have a span class equals oh, input dash group dash add-on it does help if you spell it right as of everything in programming and inside here we're just going to put the dollar sign and actually this doesn't need its own line I don't even know why I did that right and then here what we can do is we just create a text box like normal well yeah well, it's normal so we put input that input type equals text and then we have a class equal to form dash control it's just a general class to give text boxes the styling of bootstrap we've looked at this before uh, in the mains bootstrap 3 series and then we're also going to be a placeholder so that there is some default text in there. This is going to be enter price. Just like that. So now, when we go into here, you can see enter price. And the way I made it smaller is... Uh, where is it? Okay, so input group, and then I'm just going to add col-lg-3. So that will make it one quarter of the page width. Just like that. So that's one quarter of the page width and we can put four along here. The next one we're going to have a look at is having one on the front and the back. So what I can do here is I can just copy this and paste it down here. And basically all, all you do is copy the span here and put one on the end. It's just as simple as that. And here we go per unit or per item, whatever I put. doesn't matter. Like that. And now you see we've got per unit at the end. The next one I did is if I just copy this again and remove the beginning one. Next one I did was a search was a search button. And this is quite simple. First gonna put into some text. And instead of being input group add-on, this is gonna be input group BTN. And then inside here, I'm just gonna open this up a bit. Remove that. And then inside here we're gonna have a button class equals BTN and then BTN dash primary. So this is just a normal button as usual and here I can just go search save that and then if we have a look at here we've got a search button there and that's fully functioning so that's all the ones I've showed you before uh, some other things we can do uh, include making this bigger so we could in fact have uh, if I just I'll just copy one of these okay so if I just have one here and I'm gonna remove this cool dash LG3 so basically what we should have is that. What we could do is add to this input group input dash group dash LG. Oh. And if we go back here, you see we've got this massive text box here now. And we could also use dash SM. And that will give us a smaller compact version like that. Uh, one more thing, if I remove that so it's just normal sized, we could also put a checkbox in front of this. So all we need to do for this is input type equals checkbox. Save that. Go back into here. And you see now we've got a checkbox there. So we could choose whether this is enabled or disabled or whatever. And we could also do the same for a radio button. For a radio button, this will just be radio. And there we go. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, leave a comment, like, uh, rate and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.